Hi everybody, I'm Roger Gunn and welcome to Golf Levels for the 4 and Under Handicap Short Game. Well, most of the golfers in the world are trying their darndest just to get to your level, but that's little consolation when you're the one trying to get better. I think you'll find in going from a 2 to a scratch, it might take you as much time as it took you to go from a 20 down to a 12. But that's not to say that it can't be done, because it can. If you have a focused attack on what you're working on and the time to put into it, you might find yourself being surprised at how much better you can get, even at this level. Now what we're going to learn today are some of the strategies and techniques behind great practice, some of the different grass conditions, and how to handle them. And we're going to learn some of those tricky shots that you're going to need to know how to play as you get into some bigger competitions. Now most people at this handicap level have a short game that's pretty darn good. But you know what? Pretty darn good at this handicap level isn't going to get it. To be a truly expert player in this game, you have to have a short game that's at least good, and that's minimum requirements. We need it to be excellent. Now the importance of short game at this level can really be analyzed in looking at the tour players and their statistics on putting. If you can imagine the tour players, when they're three feet and in, they're making about 90%, 95% of those putts. Take those same players out to six feet and they only make about 50% of the putts. So it's a big difference just in that little change of distance. Now let's really analyze that by looking at golfer A and golfer B. Golfer A, we're going to give him a great short game. He chips it to three feet on average. Golfer B has a pretty good short game. He's going to chip it to six feet on average. And we'll make them really kind of nice golfers, maybe a college level player, where they might hit nine greens around. Well, after 18 holes, we're going to give golfer A no bogeys because he's chipped it within three feet of the, of the hole. He's going to make 90 to 95 percent of them, so maybe one bogey, maybe zero bogeys. Golfer B, because he chips at six feet on average, he's going to make four or five bogeys per round. Well, after four rounds, that's going to be 16 to 20 shots. It's an absolute slaughter. So what happens is it's a very fine line in terms of chipping it just that extra little bit closer to the hole. Those shots can really add up over time, as we just talked about. So again, your, your short game at this handicap level has to be absolutely airtight. Now I know what you're thinking. You've seen the players on TV and you'd swear that they make more putts than that. But what happens is the television is showing us the five or six players out of a 156-man field that are winning the tournament that week. That's why they're on television. If they're missing putts, they're not playing well enough to be on the TV that week. So that short game, getting it, chipping it close enough to the hole is absolutely huge at this area. Now Steve Pate, a Ryder Cup member and friend of mine, I asked him about his practice when he gets home and has an off week. Well, he told me that he practices about 20 to 25 hours per week when he's home. And what he does is he puts about 15 to 20 hours of that practice into his short game and about five into the hitting area. So he's really focusing on that short game area because it's really the place where the scores can be made. You know, a friend of mine once said that a great short game is almost never wasted. A good ball striking round may or may not yield a great score. So what does this tell us about your short game is that it's absolutely huge. You must have the knowledge. And once you have that, you're going to have to put the time into your practice. So let's head out to the golf course and see what we can do about getting you to the next level. Now here's one for you. You know, if you play some really nice golf courses with some fast, hard greens and some deep rough, you're going to see this shot where the ball might trickle past the putting surface, get on the fringe, and boom, it runs into that little wall of rough. Now this can be a really tricky shot. You might even be very close to the pin, so it looks like you could almost putt it, but you have this huge wall of grass right behind you hurting your impact. So there's a great way to play this shot, and it's called the bladed wedge. When we take the bladed wedge, we're going to take the sand wedge or even your lob wedge, something that's really quite heavy, and you're going to be able to hit it just like you do a putt. Here's how you play it. What we're doing is we're going to have the club head passing along the ground here, and we're looking for the leading edge of the club to basically contact right around the equator of the ball. 
Now I'm using a sand wedge here because it is heavy, it's going to cut right through there. The putter is not going to be able to do that as well. So all I have to do is get this very sharp and heavy leading edge to it and make contact with the ball and the ball is going to take off just fine. Now when I, when I make this shot it's going to be a putting grip and a putting stroke. So I'm going to go ahead and stand just like my putter, I'm going to grip it like my putter and swing it back and forth catching it right in the middle of the ball. Let's take a look at it. Putting grip, putting stroke, I'm hovering it right where I want it to make contact and then I swing it back and forth. Not too bad. Now another place where the bladed wedge can come in handy is a situation just like this where I have a very steep embankment that runs down to the hole. Now my ball is slightly in the rough but I've got to just get it just going on to this area here. If it has any momentum it'll run right on down. So if I go ahead and use this shot, the bladed wedge, it's going to be a great one. Now why would I want to use this? Because it's very difficult to fly the ball just a foot or two. So if I have uniform country here, in other words there's no bad spots in between the ball and where it needs to get to, then the bladed wedge can really come in handy. Not too bad. The bladed wedge, it's a good one.